Hi there smart monkeys and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. This is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, so yeah, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification button to see when I post any new videos. I have been unable to post for the last two weeks and I do apologize to all of you guys who are waiting for videos. My sister just had a baby and she needed me to help her and then I got sick, so for two, for the whole of last week I was out and wasn't able to post any videos. So yeah, but I'm back and hopefully I will um, take you guys through for the rest of this year and yeah, give you guys videos that will really help you um, do well for your, in your tests and your exams. Alright, so in this video I'm continuing with measurement. Um, I created a video on perimeter area and then surface area and now I'm looking at capacity and volume. Yeah, so let's jump right in. All right, grade 12. So this is the fifth lesson under the measurement topic. Um, and we're going to be looking at volume and capacity. And you know, I always like to start with making sure you understand what these terms actually mean. So if we look at volume, volume is the entire space taken up by a three-dimensional shape. So in other words, what space is inside a three-dimensional shape? So if you've got a can of Coke, what is the actual space inside of that? Um, if you've got a box, you know, what is the actual space inside that, bo inside that box? So that is the volume. And um, capacity is then how much liquid can you actually fit inside a three-dimensional shape? Okay, so do you see why we do this together? Because essentially, what the, the, volume, the, the volume of a specific space will determine how much liquid can actually fit in that space. So there's this clear relationship between the capacity of a shape as well as the volume of a shape. Okay, now before I go on, I just want to make sure that you understand that there's a distinction. And when the way I teach uh, measurement is that we always start with perimeter, which I did two videos ago, and that is the outside sides of a two-dimensional shape. Then we moved on to area, which is the entire space inside of a two-dimensional shape. And then surface area is the area added up of all of uh, the surfaces of a three-dimensional shape. And then volume is now the space inside a three-dimensional shape. So uh, the, when you study this, I want you to remember this as perimeter and area are of two-dimensional shapes and surface area and volume are of three-dimensional shapes. Okay, where perimeter is looking at the outside sides of a two-dimensional shape and area on the entire space of the inside of that um, two-dimensional shape. And then when we move to surface area, we're looking at the outside sides, which is the surface area, the surfaces, and then the volume is the inside of three dimensions. So when you remember it like this, I think it's a lot easier for you to sort of know how this all fits together. But in this video, like I said, I'm focusing on capacity and volume. So volume is the empty space, the entire space that's inside a shape. And then the capacity is how much liquid can actually fit in that space, okay? So an example of what this would look like is if you look at that, volume is the entire space inside, and then capacity is essentially how much liquid can fit inside that um, shape, okay? So make sure that, that you're clear on these definitions. So let's actually look at, yeah, so look at the conversions here. So if this shape has got a thousand centimeters cubed, so remember volume, the unit is always cubed. And so if this shape has got a thousand centimeters cubed, so that's the volume, then that means it's equal to one liter that can actually fit in that specific volume. Okay, so that's just sort of numerically how these fit together. Now I want to look at an example. Okay, and this example, the specific example that I've chosen, I chose for a reason because there's two elements to this question. There's one, a literacy question, like where you have to use your reasoning and you have to answer in full sentences and you have to sort of articulate um, your understanding of the context. And then the second question is around um, just like actual calculations of volume and capacity and how these link together. Okay, so those are the two questions we're going to be looking at now. So let's read the example. Sibu Siswe, a small business owner, makes and sells candles. 
Through market research, he discovered that there is a greater demand for candles at the moment. The capacity of the mold for one candle is 1180 milliliters. Right? So that means the mold that we have, the space of liquid that can fit in that mold is 1180 milliliters. Right? The length of each candle is 15 centimeters. So from the bottom to the top, essentially the height of that candle is 15 centimeters. Then the conversion is given, which I explained in the pre previous sort of example when I showed you the difference between volume and capacity. One liter is equal to a thousand centimeters cubed. And the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi times radius squared times length, where pi is 3.142. So based on this information, they want you to answer the following questions. So 1.1 says, State one possible reason why there is an increase in demand for candles. Okay, so if this is a South African context, this could be easily answered by you stating South Africa is experiencing load shedding and people would need candles during power outages for light. Okay, so see now where there's now a demand in candles during this time in South Africa and the question is then asking, why do you think there's a demand for candles, right? So low shading would be an ideal example for why there would be an increase. Here you would use your own discretion, you will reason your way through this. And please make sure when you answer these questions that you answer them in full sentences. Don't just say low shading, okay? Make sure that you give full sentences and so that, um, your, that the person who's marking it clearly understands what it is that you're trying to say. Okay. So that is our literacy question. Again, we are taking the context into consideration. We're trying to understand, you know, what the possible reason is. And you're literally giving your reason here. Now, I always tell my students, there really is no right or wrong answers here. Usually when markers mark this, there's sort of various options. But ideally, it must make sense why there are need for candles. Okay, if, if, as long as your argument is logical and it makes sense to the person who's marking, you will get a mark for that. Okay, then the next question. So this is again the same scenario, but now the next question, and this is a very intricate question. If you can understand this with volume and capacity, then you've got volume down. So if you don't get it the first time that I go through it, go through it the second time, go through it the third time until you can grasp this, because once you can grasp this question, and obviously, I choose the questions in this way because I don't have the opportunity to be in class with you and go over all the various types of um, examples. So I always choose questions that cover most of what you need to know so that if you can master the difficult, the harder questions, then all the other questions sort of become easier. Okay, so again, it's the same scenario, but now the question says, calculate in centimeters the diameter of the mold. Round your answer off to the nearest unit. Okay, so let's quickly work out what it is, make sure we understand what it is that they're asking. So here is our candle mold, right? And the information that they give us is that the capacity, which means the amount of liquid that can fit in this mold, is, is 1,180 1, milliliters, right? They also tell us that the height is 15 centimeters. What they are asking us now is to calculate the diameter. Okay, so there we understand what is actually being asked. Now, if you look at this, you think, okay, the volume of a cylinder is given in the question is pi times radius squared times length, right? Now, if we look at this formula, the volume of the cylinder can be calculated from the capacity, right? So that we actually have. They don't ask us to calculate the volume. That, we, that is literally given through us, through the capacity. Then pi, which is 3.142, that's fine. Radius is actually what we do not have. Because remember, the diameter is what's being asked, and the diameter is 2 times radius. So ideally in this formula, we are looking for the radius, right? And then multiplied by the length, and the length is the 15 centimeters. So the only information that isn't really given to us is the radius, and that's what we are required to calculate. 
So, if we're going to first, now we need to actually substitute all the values that we actually know in the formula so that we can use the formula and equation method to find the answer. So, ideally, the volume is equal to 3.142 times the radius, which is what we want to calculate, times 15. Now, remember, we have the volume. So, let's just quickly calculate what the actual volume is going to be because the volume needs to be given in centimeters cubed. So, if we look here, we have 1,180 milliliters, right? And this is the relationship between the capacity and the volume. So, if I'm going to take the milliliters, right? And to be able to use this formula, I need to get my capacity in liters, right? So, what is essentially happening here is I'm converting this capacity that's given in milliliters to liters, Right? And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can use the LVN method to actually calculate the volume. Now, if you don't know what the LVN method is, please go to my video on conversions. Right? So, if we look at this now, we'll see, okay, now we've got 1.18 liters and we need to find out what's the volume. So, we use the LVN method, which is anti-clockwise. Divide first, then times. So we go 1,000 divided by 1, multiplied by 1.18. And the answer is 1,180 centimeters cubed. So what is this that we've just calculated? We've converted the capacity, which is the liquid that can fit in here, and we've converted it into the actual volume, right? Which is in centimeters cubed. Fine. Now we have 1,180 centimeters cubed now we have the volume right so i can substitute the volume so have a look at this formula now and make sure that you know where all these values come from this 1180 is the volume the 3.142 is what they ask us to use for pi and then times radius squared multiplied by 15 and the 15 is now the height or the length okay now we will then use the equation method to solve for the radius. Now, this is a maths concept, and I sort of break it down and make it easy for you. I'm going to explain to you how this is done. Essentially, you're going to move everything over the equal to sign and changing the operation to its opposite, right? And leaving what we're trying to figure out on the right. So, on the left, we've got the 1180. And I want to find R squared alone, which means I'm going to move the 3.142 and the 15 over the equal to sign. But because on the right hand side, this is multiplication, when I take it over to the left, I'm going to divide. So I've got 1180 divided by 3.142 divided by 15. And this gives me my radius on the right by itself. Okay, if I simplify that, I get 25.13713, etc. Remember, I'm not rounding off any answers. I only round off my final answer, right? So in order for me to find the radius, I then, because this is radius squared, okay? So this is radius times radius. So in order for me to find what the actual radius is, I have to square root this. And that's when I get my actual radius answer of 5.003, okay? Now, is this my final answer? No. Why? Because the question asks for the diameter, now, I know that the radius is from the center to the circumference. So, if I want to calculate the diameter, I just take this radius formula now and multiply it by 2. And that will give me 10.0074, etc. And if I round this off to the context of the question or I round it off to two decimal places, my answer will be 10 centimeters. Okay, so this is now where... This, if you can understand all the aspects of this question, great well, I can promise you that this will make volume and capacity calculations doable for you in any question paper. Okay, so ideally in this question, we had to first work, we worked from the capacity and we worked back to try and find the radius. And then the radius we had to multiply by 2 to find the diameter. Okay, so this was a, a difficult question. So if it's this certain part that you didn't quite get, go back. Play it for yourself again one or two times more and see if you sort of can get to actually grasp what is happening here. Ideally, it's important for you to understand it. If you didn't know that capacity and volume are linked and have a relationship between each other, you wouldn't have been able to answer this question.
okay and all of the questions that i do take for my videos i take uh, i look at it past papers i use it as inspiration and i create questions that is similar to what's being asked so that you can get used to that type of question okay so i really hope that this video sort of helped you understand capacity and volume a whole lot better so there's that video i hope you found it helpful and yeah if you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions please leave it in the comment section um yeah and any if you have any recommendations for the future videos i have been trying to make videos based on what you guys have been asking for so yeah please do that and i thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye guys